Good afternoon. The title of the next discussion is what do I do with the adolescent varicose cell? Apparently, there is no discussion in this case because there is a lot in the literature and actually there are guidelines. As you can see, the best practice policy report published in 2001 clearly indicates that adolescents who have varicose cell and objective evidence of reduced ipsilateral testicular size should be offered varicose cell repair. Those recommendations were further reinforced in 2008. And similar approach is expressed in the current edition of a Campbell's urology. The same actually is written in the EAU guidelines published in 2014. So, what's the reason for this, this, this discussion? Actually, if we look carefully, those recommendations are based on very, very few and mostly non-randomized small clinical trials. So, if you can see, there's four references for the best clinical practice paper, and even in the Campbell urology, very few references. So, after this introduction, there is still a place for discussion and debate on this issue. For the sake of the discussion, two panelists were chosen actually to present the operative approach and the conservative, Dr. Minevich and Dr. Ben Meir. And honestly speaking, I don't really know what is their true standpoint, and we might ask them at the end of the discussion. So let's start with Professor Minevich. Good afternoon, as well. Again, uh, thank you for including me with this uh, discussion, and thank you, Jerome, for doing my job so easy, since you pretty much already uh, made uh, all of my points. Uh, if I can have my slides, please. Um, I will try not to uh, bore you with the numbers. Uh, I just know how to move slide, I guess. Um, unfortunately, I have no financial disclosures, but I do love this country and I come here very often. Uh, in the next few minutes, I will try to make a point that you should be considering uh, uh, surgical repair of varicose cell to potentially preserve or improve fertility, to reverse uh, damage to the growth of the testicle, and probably to relieve symptoms in those few cases where they present. But by no means I recommend to perform a prophylactic surgery for each uh, adolescent you see in the office with varicocil. Uh, what, we will start with fertility issue. We are very well aware from our adult uh, partners that in, uh, the varicocil potentially cause primary infertility in 40% in 40 of patients. 25% of patients with varicocil will have abnormal sperm. Uh, um, varicocele is associated with a long-term and progressive decrease in semen quality and uh, might cause secondary infertility in 70% of uh, patients. And we do know from the same adult experience that varicocele work, it improves motility, it reduces the need for uh, assisted reproductive technology and improve pregnancy rate if you believe in that. Um, what we probably forgot about uh, varicocele that potentially it's not just a uh, fertility issue, it's potentially relative uh, hypogonadism. And uh, those papers from uh, 80s and 90s show that uh, there is a drop of leading cells bilaterally. There is a low testosterone level in those patients. And uh, Evan Kass uh, very uh, cl cleverly demonstrated abnormal gonadotropin release uh, hormone stimulation test. So what do we know about fertility in adolescents? Unfortunately, not much, but uh, we do know that the effect on semen quality is uh, similar in adults and adolescents. 
uh, Tom Colon, who is probably one of the premier specialists in that particular area, demonstrated that 66% of uh, adolescent with varicocele will have abnormal total metal count, which is my understanding from adult literature, kind of the gold standard of evaluation of semen quality. And like in adults, uh, varicocelectomy does improve quality of uh, uh, semen, and one would ask why, because it's a unilateral process, but again, Tom Colon very, um, again, cl cleverly demonstrated in his paper that actually the, the semen quality of use with the varicocele uh, uh, look more closely like a patient with bilateral undescended testicle than with the unilateral undescended testis. Uh, as probably most of us who deal with the adolescents who don't do semen analysis very often, in my practice I never do it. If I think that patient needs semen analysis, I send them to my adult colleagues. Uh, so we need to find some uh, something else, and uh, this is one of the few cases in our lives when size does matter. And w we do know that uh, decreased testicular volume linked to impaired testicular function. Uh, the total sperm count correlates with the left testicular volume, sperm concentration correlates with left testicular volume, and Dave Diamond uh, uh, demonstrated that uh, if the difference in size is more than 10%, there is a decrease in TMC, and obviously with a 20% difference, it's, uh, the difference is, is even higher. So, uh, at least in my practice, and probably in most of your practices, testicular size has been used as a surrogate of testicular function in adolescent with a varicocele. And we do know that varicocele in adolescent does cause decrease of uh, uh, size of left testis, and uh, Ken Glassberg uh, demonstrated that the higher grade of uh, varicocele, the more chances patient has to have a uh, testicular volume decrease. Uh, but it's not just left testis. Surprisingly, right testis as well uh, is affected by left-sided varicocele, especially, specifically in grade three varicocele. One might argue that this particular paper, uh, the, the, uh, Evan used arzidometer to, to measure the volume of the testis. So the, the George Steinhardt repeated pretty much that study using ultrasound, as you can see, the not just the left testicle size or volume uh, dropping off uh, uh, during long-term follow-up, but the right one as well. So the right test is not as adequate control for estimation of the left testis atrophy, so one should use a normogram. Uh, and we do know that uh, surgery restore uh, size of the left testis uh, in approximately 80%, and there is a clear advantage of that of t for, t for reversal of testicular atrophy. Uh, what would happen if you don't do surgery? Well, let's compare surgery versus observation. And uh, it clearly showed that there is a statistical significance in catch-up growth of left and right testes if you do surgery compared to those uh, patients who are being observed only. Uh, what about symptomatic adolescent varicocele? Well, luckily it's not very common, but still up to 10% of patients would have some uh, significant archaeology, and you know it's difficult to deal with those families, not just patients, but parents as well. Unfortunately, there is very limited data about conservative management of the pain, but the recent uh, meta-analysis review demonstrated the overwhelming majority of men with varicocele-related pain who undergo conservative treatment eventually fail and would need surgery. And uh, the same report showed that it pretty much doesn't matter what kind of surgery you do. The, you, you should expect uh, complete or partial resolution of pain uh, up to 90% of the patients. Uh, so how do you do uh, varicocelectomy? Well, obvious goal is uh, to prevent uh, or disrupt venous uh, stagnation. There are multiple techniques. Uh, one could consider subinguinal, inguinal, or retroperitoneal approach. Uh, there is still ongoing debate about artery sparing surgery. Uh, there is some uh, data to support that there is a better improvement in semen analysis when you preserve artery, although the, there is a high risk and no advantage in catch-up growth. What about magnification? Well, in my personal practice for many, many years, I've used uh, microscopic inguinal approach, but after my younger partners like Paul uh, were making fun of me that I cannot adapt to new technology. I started doing over the last couple of years laparoscopic uh, approach. I do not spare artery. Um, and there is a certain trade-off. Uh, the, 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 I think there is a higher success rate with inguinal microscopic approach. 
but obviously there is a faster recovery with a laparoscopic approach. Um, but uh, like uh, I think Cyril mentioned in his presentation, I don't think it's matter how you do it, you need to do it the, w the, the way you're most comfortable uh, doing it. Thank you very much. Let us ask uh, Dr. Dudi Ben Meir from Sh Schneider Children's Hospital to present the conservative approach. Thank you. Uh, Eugene also did half of my job, so thank you very much for that. In this slide, you can see the uh, US and the ESPU guidelines uh, for uh, varicoselectomy in children and adolescents. They are uh, pretty, pretty much uh, identical with regard to the association with uh, small testes, additional testicular condition that may affect fertility, bilateral palpable varicocele, pathologic sperm quality, and symptomatic varicocele. The ESPU added another indication, which is a supranormal LH test uh, um, that may require surgery or is an indication for surgery. Uh, in the uh, very uh, exceptional short time that I have, we'll go through some of the, these indications. And the WHO um, uh, just uh, indicated that 20% of the adolescents uh, with varicocele may have, uh, may be infertility, uh, may have infertility. And uh, therefore we seek for uh, the group that will benefit from surgery. And as uh, Eugene uh, mentioned, um, uh, Diamond uh, published uh, that 20% uh, difference between testes um, in uh, adolescents with the um, um, 10 or 5 uh, in a um, large group of these patients um, there will be an abnormal uh, semen parameters. So this is the main indication today for surgery. Um, and uh, from the school of uh, Glassberg he also uh, added another uh, indication which is a retrograde peak flow above um, greater than uh, 38 uh, centimeter per second plus 15% asymmetry between testes. And the um, surgeons celebrate, as uh, Eugene said, about the catch-up growth of uh, up to 80% of the, 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 adoles the adolescents. But uh, this is also con controversial because uh, other believe that uh, this uh, catch-up growth is um, because of uh, the ligation of uh, lymphatic vessels and not only the uh, Sertoli cell um, um, that make, make this um, the testis uh, bigger. And uh, not only that, but 50% um, of the boys who have uh, asymmetry will have a catch-up growth uh, anyway because this is uh, their natural, natural growth. And another thing, in the adult uh, literature, uh, left testicular hy hypotrophy is not a clear risk factor for infertility. So why should it be in uh, adolescents? Let move, let's move to the uh, another uh, indication, the pathological uh, sperm quality. According to the uh, WHO, uh, total uh, motile count of less than 20 million per uh, ejaculate uh, requires surgery. But what is a normal value for uh, adolescents? Are there normal values for adolescents that someone knows? And is a, a semen analysis of a 16-year-old boy is equal to a 18-year-old? And uh, the other indication that uh, the ESPU have just added uh, the supernormal response to LHRH test. Their indication uh, or their evidence is based on a, on a paper from 1994. But um, in a, early, a later uh, paper from uh, the BGU from uh, 2003, it just uh, refutes this uh, indication and shows that there is no benefit from that. Let's move to the symptomatic varicocele. All we have the symptoms that are um, in the literature are symptoms of adults. What are the symptoms in uh, adolescents? No one knows. There is no study that I 
have found that is discussing uh, symptomatic varicose procedures in adolescents. We know that the differential diagnosis list is very long in adolescents for acute scrotum or uh, scrotal pain. And for the finale, because of the short time, there is no evidence whatsoever that varicoselectomy in the pediatric age is better than wait and operate them on a later age. So why should we perform varicoselectomy in children and adolescents? Thank you. Thank you.